be talking about the current reality, about the gap between where you are today and where you want to be. So I've been talking a lot about um, the whole name of this group, From Survival to Success, is all about how take people go from where their business is trading today to where they'd like it to be trading in the future. That time when your business is actually delivering you the lifestyle that you want, the income that you want, it's serving the world the way you want it to serve the world. So, and when we start, it's never going to be quite like that. It's going to move to that point. But when we go to change our business, one of the first things we need to know is to really be clear about where we're starting from, where that change process is starting from. Because if we get that wrong, then we can actually end up making more of a mess of our business than it is in currently. So I'm not saying a business is necessarily a mess, but it, it, you can upset the apple cart by doing something that is unrequired by your business or, in fact, something that is going to damage something that exists in your business today and you weren't aware of it. So I, I used the example the other day. Um, I was doing a, a webinar um, with a friend of mine and he was talking about this idea of change. I said, you know, if I ask you for the directions from L for, to London, and you assume that I'm in Plymouth, then you're going to give me directions from Plymouth to London, which is great if I'm in Plymouth. But if I start in Glasgow, you wouldn't be surprised if I ended up in the Shetland Islands because I'd be going sort of northeast from Glasgow, I'd be going northeast from Plymouth, and I'd hopefully end up in London if I was in Plymouth. But you, if I, you gave me the directions to London from Plymouth and I was in Glasgow, it's not going to help me very much. Now that may be a bit of a graphic description, but that's exactly what happens when people start to change their business to reach a new goal and they haven't really ascertained where they are to start with. So today is all about ascertaining where you are now today, where you start with, what are the things you need to know so that you can get to your goal you want to achieve and make sure that you don't upset the apple cart, upset the business as it's trading today because that's you want to protect that and you want to add to it, you want to grow, you want to move it forward. So I found a lovely quote this morning which is if you give me six hours to chop down a tree, I'm going to spend the first hour sharpening the axe. Now what does that mean? Well, if I have a goal that I want to reach, and I'm going to go through an example in a minute, but if I've got a goal I want to reach, I've actually got to do the preparation first. I've got to do the work first before I move on towards my goal. The thing is here, what is your current reality? Where is your business today before you start moving it to where you want it to be? And I'm going to use the example, which is sort of quite common in small businesses, where you know you, you might want to double your income. You've built the business up, you've got a framework of the business running, and you've now got it to say, I don't know, fifty thousand pounds a year, and you'd like to take it to the next level to a hundred thousand pounds, and that is possible within a year. That's absolutely achievable. But before you start on the journey, you really need to understand where you are today with respect to that goal. So if you want to increase your income from £50,000 to £100,000 in one year, what are the things you need to know now so that when you start to change your business, you start to interact differently in your business, you're not damaging what you've already got, you're actually enhancing it and making it possible to get to that new level of business. So the first thing you might want to be really clear about is what is your current turnover? How much are you turning over today? What is the turnover now? You might want to know the number of customers you've got and really importantly, the average spend of your customers. So if you have 100 customers and they each spend 5,000 pounds with you, well, that's great, that's 500,000 pounds. Now, that would be a huge growth in your business. But if your 50,000 pounds is based on 100 customers spending 100 pounds with you, then you've got a bit of a way to go. You've got to get a lot more customers to get to that £100,000. So how do you know the number of customers you've got and the number of customers you're going to need? Well, you need to look at the data you've got now on your business. So your current turnover, the number of customers, the average spend of each of those customers. And when you realise how many new customers you're going to have to add, you need to look at your capacity. What is the business designed to cope with? How many people can it cope with? Because if your business is designed to cope with one customer a week, for example, then adding 10 customers to your business is going to be a real challenge. You're going to need to add more resources to the business to be able to cope with more customers. So not only do you need to understand the numbers of your customers and the average spend, you need to understand the numbers in, return, in regards to your capacity. How many customers can you deal with? And how much does it cost to acquire that customer? One of the things that growing businesses experience is an increase in their cost, their increase in their cash flow, their working capital requirement, because they need to spend money to grow the business. 
So if you're going to grow the business from £50,000 to £100,000, how much money are you going to have to spend to get there? And if you look at your customer base currently, where are you going to get those extra customers? So if you need another 50 customers in your business to make that jump from £50,000 to £100,000, where are those customers going to come from? What are they doing now and how long does it take you to get a new customer on board your business? So these are all questions you need to be asking yourself about your current business so that you know which bits, which levers and dials you can use to start the move the business, start to move the business forward. So you actually need to know those da that data now. And that sometimes is hard to get and you need to spend some time working that out. Another thing you need to be absolutely clear about is not only the skills you require to deal with your customers today, but if you increase the business and you increase the number of customers, what other skill sets are you going to need to have within the business? Because on your own, you might be able to cope with a small number of customers quite easily. But as soon as you get to a larger number of customers, or you get a more complex range of customers, then you're going to need systems and processes in place that are going to enable you to look after those customers as well as you do look after your current customers. So what are the sorts of things you need to put in place to make sure that happened? And then how about the customer journey? At the minute, you might meet a customer and have a conversation with them and then do some business with them. That'd be great. But if you're going to start to increase that number of people, you may not be able to get to enough customers to meet them, to convert enough of them into being customers. You might need to introduce <coughs> pardon me, a new process for attracting customers towards you. So the starting point of your customer journey might change. You might need to start thinking about, well, if I want to attract 100 customers, that means I need to be in front of 1,000 customers, if your conversion rate is 1 to 10, uh, 10 to 1, sorry. Uh, but if I'm going to convert that, if I want 100 people to read my blog, I may have to put it in front of 10,000 people. Or if you're using public speaking, for example, to get your customers, you may need to get in front of more people to make those relationships. If you have a referral system, you may need more people to refer you to be able to get those increased customers. And that'll depend upon the relationships you have, not just within your company. If you have employees in your business, it's like the relationship you have to stretch those employees, to get them to commit more time, to more effort, more focus on growing the business, and also maybe taking on new skills to help you grow the business. So by knowing where you are today, it starts to create a line of detail that you need to start to grow the business forward. Now, I'm a great fan of reverse engineering. That is, you start with a goal in mind, and then you work backwards to where you are today. But the thing is, if you get this bit wrong, reverse engineering from a goal back to something that you don't know how it's going to work doesn't really make sense because you'll get to this point and what you think is going to work to make you achieve your goal isn't going to be there. It's not going to be the right thing. So the final part is you've got to be absolutely clear about how you're operating as a business owner because you are going to have to make some changes too because you're going to be engaging with your people differently. The relationships you're going to have with your people are going to change slightly and therefore you're going to have to change the working environment for your people to take on this extra work, to take on the extra commitment. And therefore, to do that, you are a major part of the environment. So how, what changes are you going to have to make to make sure that you can get the changes in your business that you want to see at the end of the year? And you might need to look at things like your vision, your values, your purpose, and just check to make sure that they're not in the way of the growth that you desire. And finally, remember, you have the greatest impact on your business. It's your business, it's your impact that drives it, that you are the, you're the driver, you are the decision maker, you're the leader, you're the inspirer. So you've got to be ready to step up to the mark to take your business to that next level, to the £100,000 business. And in your mind, you've got to stop running a £50,000 business and start running that £100,000 business. Or maybe double it up, go to or 10 exit, go to a million pound business. Start thinking like that and start to figure out what you're going to need to put into your business to make it grow. Hope that was useful. Make sure you understand your current reality before you start making those changes. Thank you for watching. Hope it's been useful. See you soon. Bye for now.